Bachman Trains has updated their large-scale 120.3 two-truck Climax with all sorts of brand-new premium features, including soundtrack tsunami sound technology with authentic bell, whistle, chuff, and more realistic high-quality 16-bit sound. Let's take a look and see what you get inside the box. Inside the box, you will find multiple plastic bags containing different items. Inside, you will find one smokestack, but you will also find a second smokestack. So there's actually three all together. We took one off of the unit so you can see what all three look like. There's a small notch in the smokestack, so make sure when you put this back on, you put the notch in the right direction. There's also an optional coal load and a piece that goes down in front to replace the oil load that's there. And of course, there's our two friendly Bachman guys. Inside one of the bags were more bags. And inside each one of these bags, you'll find different parts to use on your locomotive. The unit has Talgo styled couplers mounted front and rear, but they give you the option to body mount the couplers as well. You will also find a plastic tube, and of course, there's the Bachman bag of parts that come with your Climax. All sorts of little additional accessories and details that you can add to your Climax. You will also find two boards inside that will help you install aftermarket products into the non-proprietary plug-and-play electronic socket. Inside the box you will find some paperwork that includes a very detailed manual with a lot of good information a quick start guide for the sound system as well as a DVD that has information on it that you should check out. There's a lot of exploded diagrams in here and I just could not believe the number of parts that make up this Climax from Bachman Trains. If anybody tells you these are toys, they're not toys. These things are almost as complicated looks like as the space shuttle. There's information of how to take the bunker off, and we'll be doing that later in the video. There's also information on the electronics. It's very easy to install third-party electronics with the non-proprietary plug, but if you're going to need to do some additional work, there's good details there. On the front of the unit, you'll find a tag that shows you the switch position for the smoke unit, either DCC, off, or DC operation. The list of features on this unit is long. It has a non-proprietary plug-and-play electronics interface to accommodate the control system of your choice, including DC, NMRA, DCC, and radio control battery operation. You can choose track or battery power pickup operation according to NMRA or large-scale railroading practices. You can choose either DCC or DC operation for the smoke unit, as well as the operation of the cab lights, firebox, flicker, ash pan glow with a center off position. There are optical sensors in the locomotive that give you the option of adjusting the timing and count of steam chuffs, precision balanced can motor, all new metal gears, there's a prototypically correct operating Johnson bar as well as constant lighting of the LED headlight and cab light. The unit has a lot of details and if you look at it very closely you'll see that they've done an excellent job recreating this model. There's also working windows on each side of the cab. On the back you will find two sandboxes. Those are used to hide the electrical switches that control features to the engine. You can turn the motor on and off. You can control the lights either off or DC or DCC operation. You control the track power or battery power. And you can control the polarity based on large scale or NMRA standards. You'll also find on the top of the unit a light. Both lights on the front and back are LEDs. If you take off the top unit, be careful because there's a fan inside. Yep, there's so much electronics, Bachman keeps them cool by having a fan, so when you pull this off, make sure you take the time to pull off the connector. The unit that we received included the Soundtrack Tsunami Sound, and that's the board you were looking at. And here are the two battery input connectors. We're going to take the board out so you can see what it might look like where you would install your own remote control inside the non-proprietary plug-and-play system. To get a look at the electronics, we removed the smokestack and then the top of the 
bunker. Make sure, of course, to unplug that fan. This way we could take off the plastic surrounding the electronics and get a good look at it. It was simple to do. There are just four screws and then the bunker can be removed. This is video of the first time that we removed the bunker. As we were working with it, we thought it might be helpful to remove the switch cover so we could get a better look at what we were doing. And then we very slowly tried to lift, didn't want to damage anything, and found that if we kind of tipped it up in the front to the back, it would come off over the lip, and that way we were able to remove it up and out. Now the second and third time we did this it was a lot faster but just take your time and it should just come right out. There's also a piece that you will find that blocks the front of the bunker. You need to find that and remove that as well. If you take a look at this you can see that the electronics in large-scale trains has greatly improved over the last 15 years. It's hard to look at this picture and wonder is it a train or was it a computer? Now that we've got the bunker off, we could take a look inside the cab so you could see the detail that Bachman Trains has put in there as well. The details inside the cab really are amazing. If you take a good look, it just looks real. Remember, if you change from oil to coal, you need to move the fan so that the electronics will stay cool. It can have different looks by putting on different smokestacks as you see here in the video and it also changed the look by going from oil to coal powered. The Bachman unit comes DC ready so we went ahead and put it up on some rollers, added some power just to see what it looked and sounded like. We hooked up our meter so we could measure volts and amps as we ran the engine. We found that the mechanism started to move somewhere around 12 and a half volts and when we brought it up to about 15 or so volts, the unit drew just a little over half an amp. We happen to have a Bachman Easy Command wireless DCC digital control system and we were able to hook it up really just in a matter of minutes. It gave us the ability to control the unit wirelessly and activate each of the individual sound features of the soundboard. We could blow the horn. There was a cylinder blow down. There was a dynamo sound. and a water stop. There was also sound of coupling and uncoupling. And one nice feature was if you had a sound going you could mute the sound without turning the sound off and on. 
The light on the front of the unit is a constant light LED that comes on with very little power. There's also one on the back that works exactly the same way. There's an ash pan glow underneath using two LEDs that looks very nice. And there's also cab lighting inside as well. We found that the front LED was bright and would show up on your track at night. It looks like Bachmann has reintroduced another winner with a lot of new and improved features, but let's go outside and take it for a run. If you missed out the first time Bachmann introduced the Climax, you now have another opportunity to add this engine to your railroad. <laughs> 